Okay, we'll keep on with our uh, unit six review on rational, um, I'm sorry, radical equations. So this time we're going to talk about 6.4, which is rational exponents. And we'll start with question 15 from the review packet. The direction said to convert these three functions, convert the following from exponential to radical form and then simplify our result. So number 15 is in exponential form. I need to convert that to radical form. So the numerator of my exponent is what I raise my number to, and the denominator is what I root it to, which means my x is gonna have to be raised to the fourth power, and then we're gonna have to do the third root. So that's my function in radical form. Now we just have to see how we can simplify. So to simplify, we're gonna use our division process. I have four x's. I need to divide them into three groups. Three goes into four once, which tells me that one x can come to the front. My remainder, one times three is only three, my remainder one tells me that one x is trapped inside. That's it, number 15 is finished. Let's go ahead and try and put number 16 in radical form. For number 16, it's very important to recognize the order of operations. The order of operations says, if I plug something in for a, the first thing I do is the exponent. The next thing I do is multiplication. So because the exponent happens first, this is essentially three times a to the two-fifths power. Only the a is being raised to the two-fifths power, which means only the a will be rewritten in, exp uh, in radical form. The three will stay on the outside. So now we can take the a and rewrite the two-fifths as a radical. The two will be the exponent of a, and the five will be the index. And this is as simplified as this problem can get. We need five of something to bring anything out of this radical. I only have two a's, so that's as far as I can go with that problem. For number 17, you'll notice that something else has happened here. I have this exponent on the outside, and I also have a number and a variable, it, but my number and my variable are inside parentheses this time, which means the very first thing that's gonna happen between the 16 and the b to the fourth is the multiplication and the second thing to happen will be the exponent. So the order has switched because the parentheses have grouped the 16 and the b to the fourth together. So in this case, the 16 also has an exponent. It has the 1 half exponent. So what we're gonna do is use our exponent rules. We will distribute the 1 half exponent to both the 16 and the b to the fourth. Both of them are being raised to the 1 half power. So 16 to the 1 half power and b to the fourth to the one half power. I'll use parentheses to differentiate between those two exponents. All right, so 16 to the one half power, we can actually do that operation because the one half power means the square root. So that's actually the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is just four. So that number was pretty simple to simplify. Ha, simple to simplify. All right. Up next, we have b to the fourth power to the one half power. I'm gonna have to multiply those exponents. So b to the four times one half. That's b to the four over two, which is b squared. And that's it, that's completely simplified. Let's go ahead and take a look at question 18 now. Question 18 and 19 are kind of the opposite. They say, convert from radical to exponential form and then perform the operations. It should also say simplify at the end, so I'm gonna go ahead and simplify all my answers. We should always simplify as the last step. So in this case, the very first thing that this one wants me to do is convert from radical to exponential form. So I have two radicals in this problem. The first one is x to the fifth power and the third root. I know that my exponent is the numerator of a fraction and the index is the denominator. So that's my first term rewritten in exponential form. My next term will work the same way, except this time I don't have an exponent on my x, which means it's just being raised to the first power, and the denominator is my index, 1 fourth. Now that I have these rewritten in exponential form, we can actually perform the operation between them. We can multiply those together, but in order to multiply them, I have to add my exponents, 5 thirds, plus one fourth. And again, that's something that we're gonna have to kind of do off to the side, because in order to add five thirds plus one fourth, we're gonna need a common denominator. 
Um, these two numbers, 3 and 4 in my denominator, don't have anything in common, which means the term they're missing is each other. So this 3 needs a 4, and this 4 needs a 3. But if I'm going to multiply the denominator 3 by 4, I also have to multiply the top. And the same thing on the other side. If I multiply 4 by 3, I also have to multiply the top by 3. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by each other. Now that I've done that, I end up with 20 over 12 plus 3 over 12, which gives me an exponent of 23 over 12. So that means that what I've got over here is x to the 23 over 12 power. And I'm almost finished with this problem. I just have to simplify. Now, simplifying my exponent is nice if I can reduce it, but this number 23 over 12 can't be reduced, which means putting it in radical form is the easiest way to simplify it. So x to the 23rd power means that there are 23 x's inside my radical, and the 12 is my index. This can be simplified really easily if we use the division um, method. So I have 23 x's inside my radical. I need 12 in order to bring anything out. 12 goes into 23 once with a remainder of 11. So that 1 means that 1x can come out of my radical. And the 11 means that 11x's are stuck inside. The very last thing I could do there, since I took an even root and I have x by itself, I could put an absolute value right there. All right, let's try number 19 and see how this guy goes. Again, this problem is asking me to do this process by writing it in exponential form first. I don't have to convert this into exponential form in order to simplify in, um, this problem, but the directions do tell me to. So I'm going to go ahead and use that method. If you would also like to just leave them as radicals and simplify that way and see if you can get the same answer, that's probably a good idea. So you never know which form of this question will be on the test, whether it wants to use exponents or radicals. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. We're going to start by writing this first term in exponential form. This term right here is inside a radical, being rooted to the third root. So a to the seventh, b cubed, this thing here, has the third root happening, which we know for an exponent, that's the denominator. What I don't see is the numerator. So I have to figure out what a to the seventh b cubed is being raised to. And since there's no number that it collectively is being raised to, it means it's just being raised to the first power, because everything's being raised to the first power. So that first term as an exponent is a to the seventh b cubed to the one third power. I can do the same thing for the second term. Again, I have a squared b to the seventh collectively being rooted to the third root and the exponent that they're being raised to is an, an invisible one. So the one third power means the third root. Now that I have these written out, we can use our rules from 6.4 to know that I can distribute this exponent inside to both terms. And when I raise the seven to the one third power, I can multiply them. A to the seventh to the one third power, I multiply those exponents. I end up with A to the seven thirds. Same thing with B to the third to the one third power, that's b to the 3 thirds. Up next in my next group, I can take my 1 third power and again distribute it to both terms. So I'll end up with a to the 2 thirds when I multiply those and b to the 7 thirds when I multiply those. Now, that's everything I can do to distribute my exponents, but I do want to try and simplify this. And here I can see that I actually have like terms happening. I have two a's here. And if I multiply all of these together, when I multiply like terms, I add the exponents. So this is going to be a to the 7 thirds plus 2 thirds, which is going to be the 9 thirds. Then I can go ahead and add my b's. Here's my b to the 3 thirds and b to the 7 thirds. That's going to be a grand total of b to the 10 thirds when I add those exponents. Now all we have to do is some simplifying, and we are actually almost done. a to the 9 thirds is just a to the third power. 9 divided by 3 is just 3. b to the 10 thirds can be simplified if I put it back in radical form. Again, exponents can only be simplified if they can be reduced, and once they can't be reduced, to simplify this radical, we would have to see it as a radical form. So this b is being raised to the tenth power, and the 3 in the denominator is my index. All I have to do is use my division rule. I have 10 b's inside this radical. I want to put them in three groups. 3 goes into 10 three times, which gives me a remainder of 1 which means that three b's can come out with the a cubed I already had, b cubed.
cubed. And then inside my radical, I just have one B left over. That's it. So that would be my final answer right there. We're going to continue in the next video talking about solving radical equations.